Greetings. This is Kathleen Caldwell. We are talking today in the C-Suite Network Women's Coaching and Consulting Council about your success as a speaker. Oh my goodness. And this is critical because in order to be seen and heard and richly rewarded, you want to be able to have a signature speech, a signature talk, along with a signature story that you can tell in any environment in like literally three minutes, 30 minutes, or in a workshop or an online event, modify it to three hours or even three days. So this is important. We're gonna be following up also on doing more tactical work with an upcoming VIP day and talking about actually putting your signature talk together. I'm Kathleen Caldwell, founder of the C-Suite Network Women's Coaching and Consulting Council and also the Corporate Coaching and Consulting Roundtable. We are all things coaching. And part of our mission for 2024 is to have more, be more, do more, enjoy more in 24. And I wanted to share with you that speaking has been one of the most key things, the biggest breakthrough areas of my business and my career because getting on stages is critical. I have loved every second of it. And so speaking has led to podcast interviews, radio interviews, TV. When you are a speaker, you can be brought into events, corporate events, public events, associations, conferences, all kinds of opportunities. And I've got a, a little photo here on the bottom right that I hosted an executive briefing event with the president and CEO of the Chicago Blackhawks. And so we did an event. I created this. It was because of my credibility as a speaker. I was able to hold the stage with this very powerful man, John McDonough. And we invited executives from all over the Chicagoland area to an event about leadership. And so your ability to command the stage is absolutely critical. And so why, again, why to be a speaker, why to have speaker success, you get to connect with your ideal clients. Your ideal clients are in the audience and, and people who, who know your ideal clients are in the audience as well. It's a great way to earn and generate and create income and impact for yourself, for your business, for your career. You get to also make offers from the stage. Number three is Obviously, speaking is a great visibility for yourself as an expert and a thought leader. So all of the reasons say yes. And so today we're going to talk in our three-day challenge and discuss about what is a signature talk or a signature speech. Now, there's a signature story, but I'm going to talk today about the whole big picture about a signature talk and a signature speech. Well, it's a well-structured an engaging presentation that communicates your expertise, your passion, and your unique perspective on a particular topic. And a signature talk and a speech does two things. It, you have to define your purpose. Why are you doing the talk? What's the premise and the purpose of the talk? What message do you want to convey? And most importantly, what do you want your audience to do be or have at the end of your talk. You can also, in a signature talk, you're able to identify your audience. This is so critical because speaking into the listening of your audience is so important and so clear because you can be engaging, connecting with them and having your talk resonate with them is so important, okay? You want people leaving the talk being having been bettered by your talk, okay? And again, getting clear about what your intention is. And, you know, is your intention to educate? Is it to inspire? Is it to motivate? Is it also to be able to have a call to action, people to take an action? And a lot of people say, well, my intention is to have a standing ovation. Well, that's great, but that comes as a result of you doing an excellent job. And so, Here's a basic framework. Now, I'm just going to put this on a slide. There's so much here. Yes, yes, yes. 
But essentially, there are three steps in the process. And it's really your intro, which is part of your premise. Number two are your three main points, your beginning, middle, and end. So your beginning, we're going to delve into these three particular areas with this whole framework here. But what's the beginning and the intro of your signature speech? You want to connect people to the big idea you're going to present. What's the hook? And get people connected to you. And then, of course, the premise, we'll talk about this in a moment, but what's the big idea? What is it that you're sharing? Why are you on the stage? And you're going to go in with main points, like one, two, and three. What are stories, examples, data points, metaphors you can use to support your big idea? Then two of three is what's the conclusion and the wrap up? What's the summary? What's the powerful close and call to action? So again, beginning, middle, and end. So beginning is the intro, the premise. The middle are your points, your one to three points, stories, examples, metaphors. And then the third is what's the wrap up, the conclusion, the summary, and the review. Okay. You learned this in school. And taking it into practice is a whole different deal. So the introduction, and we're going to get an example of this in just a moment, but a signature talk in a speech is starts off with that introduction. What's the captivating hook that's going to grab your audience's attention? I'm going to give you an example of it in just a moment. State the purpose of your talk and your central ideas. Introduce yourself and establish the credibility on the topic. Now, you don't even need to go into, I am so-and-so, I'm the founder of this and this and this. Your introduction can do that all at once. So this is an example of one of my signature talks. Is I start off pretty much all of my talks because my premise is always to get people to feel that they were with me in this moment. And this was a pivotal moment in my life. And so I start off pretty much every talk to say, it was the scariest day of my life. You should have been there. And I hope you weren't there. Machines beeping, people rushing around, loud noises, a bright white light over my head. And I didn't really know what I was doing in the emergency room at St. Joseph's Hospital on January 27th, 2000. So starting off with what's the premise here? What's the hook? People are leaning in and they're going, what happened there? What's going on? And then going into, it wasn't supposed to be happening. I had prepared for my fourth marathon. I felt like I had the world, world on a string, just came back from a shopping trip to Louis Vuitton in Paris, the mothership for Louis Vuitton. And I felt like I had it all together. But you'll see in the next few minutes what I learned as a result of my health scare in 2000. So people are leaning in and they're saying, wow, what happened? What's, oh, I'm interested. This is something. Wow. And of course, I always, at the very, very beginning, literally within the first five minutes, interject a little humor. Well, and then I say, well, you know, I set it all up that I was in the hospital, what was happening. I was at a little humor to say, well, I now know there are two ways to get the front, get to the front of the line. If you're in an emergency room. One is if your head is, you have the worst headache you've ever had in your entire life. Or number two, your heart is racing so fast that you feel you're having a heart attack. Well, number two was happening for me and sharing all of that and then interjecting a little humor. Well, hey, I got admitted to the cardiac intensive care unit along with people that are in their 90s. But he did have a nice room because the view over Lake Michigan was pretty spectacular. So you can see people are thinking, wow interesting. Okay. So having a strong introduction hook, something of that nature to get people to say, whoa, what's happening there? Again, what's the pivotal thing you want to share in the first five minutes? So 
Then comes your main points. What are the two, three, four main points that you want to share in your signature talk? Each point should really have a specific aspect of your story. And so the main points I will talk about is that I didn't get to the emergency room overnight. It seemed like it, but I didn't get there overnight. Key points are this physical emergency had been happening for months. And then I take them backwards. So I rewind to what was happening in my life, working, overworking, leaving on a plane on Sunday night, coming back on Friday night, no life, losing the love of my career, which then, hello, translated into feeling I was having a heart attack at age 39. Okay. So this is one way that you can do a signature talk to pull people in. And then of course, supporting evidence and stories, my goodness, through your three points, what are some stories that you can have at each point? What are some visuals you can bring in? Notice I had the pictures of the places that I was at, okay? And it's very, very powerful when you can take people on a journey through the power of storytelling. And so signature, the signature talk is something that you have practiced, you've rehearsed. It has a beginning, middle, and end. You could literally, in a heartbeat, if you were asked to speak any place, you could go in and modify your signature story. And generally, a signature story is, here's where I was, here's what I've learned, and here's where I am now. So here's what I where I was, here are the points that are important, Here's what I now know that I want to share with you, okay? So the conclusion, and we're going to hop into seeing an actual video that's excellent of this process. So the conclusion of every signature talk or speech is where you're doing a wrap-up. You're summarizing the key points. And so my key points at the end of the signature talk would be you don't have to lose the love of your career and lose the love of your business, you don't have to go to the emergency room thinking you're having a heart attack. You can regain and get the love back of your work and your career now so you won't end up where I was. Or things like, you know, um, focus on your health now so that it doesn't become a medical crisis later. So, thinking about what are your key main points for your audience, okay? And then again, with the conclusion is ending with a memorable closing statement, a call to action, a thought-provoking question. And so that's a way to kind of do what's called a callback that you call back to the beginning of your presentation. So part of this is thinking about what are the key things, number one, that you want to convey to your audience What's the key message? What are the key messages? What are the call to actions? And then coming up with key points and stories that you can use to illustrate the point. Could be client stories. Could be something like, well, I remember one of my clients, she had absolutely was going down the same path that I was going down. She was at a turning point in her business and career. She had to make the tough decision. Do I have another child or do I have to do I have to leave my current job to have to build my family or do I stay and not have another child so it was an either or situation and so my client and I worked through all of the scenarios she ended up having tremendous peace of mind and was able to have a really critical conversation a tough conversation with her manager to say, this is what I want in my career. And this is what I want for my personal life. And so because she was able to, we were able to work together, she was able to rehearse all these scenarios, work it out in her mind and be able to have that very, very difficult conversation. It ended up, she stayed, she actually got a promotion and she was able to have a child within nine months. So literally she was able to have it all. So you can see, you can weave in here some really powerful client stories too. 
So let's listen to this beautiful, short, three-minute video from Oprah. So notice how she has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Very, very powerful. Notice that literally in the first one minute, she pulls you in with a hook. And she then has her points, her story in the middle, and then she has her wrap up at the very end. And literally it's three minutes. So she's got a signature story right here in the context of this short interview. Okay, so here we go. And just confirming that you can hear everything so far. Is that correct? Okay, here we go. This is what I know. You don't become what you want. And most times in life, you don't even, you don't get what you want. And I will have to say that for me, colored girl, Negro child, growing up in Mississippi, that one of the greatest gifts I was ever afforded was not to have been put in a segregated school system. Had I been put in a segregated school and taught in a segregated school system that said, you are less than because you're a woman and you're less than because you're a colored woman, I probably wouldn't be here today. I would have had to then overcome that belief, that conditioning of a belief. But because I was raised by a grandmother who raised me in the church and I went to church, Sunday school, um, lived in the church and I would sit there second pew on the right third row every Sunday just taking it all in and I would listen to the stories listen to the Bible stories and I would hear that through God all things are possible I would hear the story of Jesus talking about if you have the faith of a mustard seed and you know, as many years later that I actually saw a mustard seed, I could not believe what a mustard seed actually looked look like. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? Here, I have some here. I want to pull one out. Now, Jesus said, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could move mountains and anything was possible. Now, I heard this as a kid and I really believed it. And so the question is, what do you believe? Do you believe that you are worthy of happiness? Do you believe that happiness, success, abundance, comfort, fulfillment, peace, joy, love is a part of your birthright? Is that what you believe or do you believe something else? Because you will manifest the life that you believe. I've always known that no matter what, my belief is I'm going to be all right. Why? Because I have that faith of a mustard seed. It's actually a few mustard seeds. Okay. Hi. So can you see in that powerful video, Oprah had a beginning, a middle, and an end. Three minutes. Very, very powerful. That was her little signature story in her signature talk. So curious for each of you, was there something that stood out for you about Oprah's short signature story? Love to get your feedback. Um, I, I think her call to action was actually a question. And I really appreciated that um, because she said, do you believe? And uh so I really liked that she made the end a question. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Absolutely. And so it leaves people feeling Period. like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Do I, do I, wow, what beliefs do I have? Do I, and, and which leaves people leaning in to thinking about what are their beliefs? Do we have the faith of a mustard seed? And I love, of course, she brought the visual, you know, so she had her beginning, middle, and end. Beginning, 
is she set it up for the credibility, for the history, for the story, those beautiful photographs of her growing up. She was setting the stage. And of course, her premise or her big idea. What do you think was her premise or big idea for her signature story there, her signature talk? To me, it was you frame and create it yourself or you let others tell you and you uh, can diminish what you achieve if you live someone else's expectation. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you very much. That's it. That's it. And she had her three points, you know, her stories, her examples of her going to school, church, having faith. Her father said to her, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, she had the example right there, showed it on her hand. That was one of her points that then you can accomplish what you want, have what you want. And so her conclusion, her summary and wrap up, and then her powerful close and call to action. So yeah, great. What else was there other things that you saw that supported that really, again, three minutes. Fantastic. So, oh, I'm sorry, Sheila, did you want to say yeah. something? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I picked up very early when she started with her story that it was very like, grew up here, uh, you know, from like just two words, each sentence of the story. Wasn't this like, long rambling monologue of where I've come from and what things were like it it she was able to do that but in very short sentences and I think that helped in terms of the time you know um but timing but I think also you're leaning in yes right yeah Yes, thank you, Christina, because notice she had a couple words, excuse me, a couple words, a couple sentences to descriptors of who she is and what she did. And, you know, of course, she's got the credibility and the social capital that we all know who Oprah is. So she's already coming into that with that. We're listening for her, uh, listening for all of that. So she didn't, you know, she didn't start off with, hi, I'm Oprah, like you're saying, um, I'm the founder of own network. You could see the logo at the bottom. You don't need it, you know, um, and you know, I founded this and done this and this. No, no. She just got right into it. So I love to, in, and again, in your workbook that I'm going to be sending to you so we can delve into you creating your signature story. We're going to have a VIP day to talk about just that. So you'll be able to craft yours. Today's really kind of an overview is what is a signature story? What's the framework? And then how can you use it? So um, with that, coming out with some key openers is really, really important. And remember, I gave an example of one of my key openers is it was the scariest day of my life. Key openers could be, I wish I knew now I wish I knew then what I knew now or, you know, different things with a curious question that's related to what you're up to. What is it? Why are you there? What's the premise of why you're there? Yep. Great. And we're going to work on all of those specifically, but starting off with something that has people lean in, as you said, said very, very, uh, very well, Christina. Thank you. Good. Susan, please jump in. The, the other thing I loved about where she started is she explained where she started and where she ended up in the very beginning by saying, you know, uh, I wouldn't have gotten here had I not had this experience that was different than what most others had. And so it opened up the whole framework for, wow, I never thought of it that way, where others might have looked at it as like, oh, you were thrown into an environment where you didn't fit in. She instead made it a learning experience that she gained from instead of a traumatic experience that she endured. Awesome, Susan. Thank you. And notice she didn't, I love exactly what you said because she didn't stay in the transformation. She didn't stay into, and I notice a lot of people now 
these days are spending a lot of time in their signature talks in the pain of it, in the living of it, almost to the point of where they transport themselves back into it. And so with this is more about, again, in the planning process is what's the goal of my signature talk? What's the goal of it? What's my intention of it? What do I want people to do, be, have, or feel as the result, as a result of this? What's the call to action? So starting with the end in mind, of course, and then backing into telling the story, not reliving the story. There's no need for tears on the stage. And you can see it. What happens with it, with us as the audience is then we're transported into the story physically with them. And then the speaker loses control of the whole talk. So kind of we're almost like, like a bird looking down on the situation, reporting on it, not being in it at the effect of it. Yes, thank you. Good. Christina, please jump in. So I'm so glad that you said that because uh, you had this one slide about a signature talk, and I think it had like three ingredients, like your passion, the goal of the talk. I forgot what the third one was, but it was, but I picked up that it's like three ingredients. And immediately I thought, wow, like I've observed so many talks that it was like only one of those things. Like it was just all about the person's passion and it, you know, it just over indexed on, you know, was it very balanced? And so I really appreciate that you had, you know, like these are the three ingredients of a signature talk just to make sure we're hitting those three things. Excellent, Christina. Yes. And so thank you for that. Let me go back to that because we can reminding ourselves to go back to, here we go. What's the purpose of the talk? What's the, the, the purpose? It's a presentation, a talk that communicates your expertise, number one, your credibility. Why are you here? Why are you qualified to be at the front of the room? Your passion, of course, your unique perspective, your thought leadership, what are you educating about on a particular topic? And of course, what do you want people to do, be, or have, or take action on at the end of this? So having a signature talk and a signature speech, it is, it's very, very profound. And to do it well, that's why professional speakers generate, earn, create literally 5, 10, 15, 25, 75, 100,000 or more for a signature talk. And sometimes they're called keynotes, of course, a keynote or a signature talk. But I think what's important is being able to have a mini signature talk always in your hip pocket so that at any time you can model that to, hey, what is it that you do? Well, you know, uh, I had a health, what, what does I do? Your origin story. Why do you do what you do? Well, I had a health scare 15 years ago. I was in the emergency room and I realized that it was because I did not have excellent work-life balance. And what I've learned is that all people deserve to have loving their business, loving their body, loving their life. So I've created a program to support people doing just that. That's my own little, I mean, little version of, you know, just kind of a quick origin story, a quick signature talk. And then people are like, whoa, they're leaning in to say, wow, tell me more about that. Yeah. So that's the whole goal is to have people leaning in and then have you at the front of the stage. And I tell you, it's such an, a glorious feeling to have people coming up at the end of a signature talk and giving you their business cards, giving you, hey, so, you know, if you, you've got books that you're selling at the back of the room, people coming up and signing. I mean, it's just, it's glorious, okay? People wanting more for you. 
And of course, we're going to flip to the next couple slides, but also people saying, I have a women's group. I have an association. I have a corporate group that I want you to speak at. Okay. So starts with, again, what's the purpose? Why? What's the purpose and the premise of your talk? And who's the audience that you're speaking to? Okay. So let's go back to, here we are. I'm flipping through our slides, but the, the key thing here is you can view yourself as a keynote speaker or a speaker or a presenter, but guess what? You get to change people's beliefs. This is such a profound opportunity that you get to provide transformation during your brief time with people, and you get to be the action instigator getting people to take action. And again, you start at the very beginning, what's the action you want them to take? So the framework is there, it's very powerful. You're gonna get a workbook that will go over these and you'll be able to literally plug in, again, what's the main point? What are your three points that are going to illustrate that? What's the call to action and next steps? What's the wrap up? Maybe even doing a little Q and A before you wrap up the program. So the powerful words of wisdom are never end on questions. So in your signature story, signature talk, people often make a mistake of, okay, and I'm gonna be then doing Q&A at the very end. Well, how many times have you left a Q&A session feeling like, oh, rah, rah, I wanna take the next step. Q&A is generally a bubble burst. So doing Q&A, well-crafted Q&A session before you do the wrap up is so very powerful, okay? So that's a mistake that a lot of people make. You won't make that because now you're reminded. So having built into your program, if you're going to do Q&A, having it before you close the program with your final words, okay? So I am going to kind of uh, follow that program and say, what questions do you have about your signature story? So let's pause here for a moment and then we'll do a nice little wrap up here. Questions coming up about your signature story. Are you inspired about this? Hmm, yes. I think with signature stories, I think it's important to have a couple different signature stories, signature presentations, signature talks that you're known for. I have a one sheet that lists the three, actually I've got about now five, five key talks that I do. They all kind of have a similar premise, but they're all leading to what's the call to action. So what are the things that you want to be known for? And so having your signature talks around that is really important. Maybe it's key things like leadership in a current workplace, health in a turbulent world while working in a fast-paced career. Maybe it's ideal. How do you brand yourself when the world is always changing? How do you stand out in a noisy world? How do you utilize AI technology to advance your business, your career? Kind of having some three different things really important. Thank you. Christina, please. And you're going to be talking on Friday about how to use AI to help us with our signature talk, as well as tomorrow is all about storytelling and more. Um, yeah, my question is, uh, do you have a process or any guidance on how to actually come up with ideas for mm. or a formula or on how to come up with ideas for signature talks? Oh, beautiful. Great question. Yes. So what is it that, or I like to start again with the end in mind and thinking about the audience. What are the three to five things that you know they are, they, they want to know about, they're curious about, they're interested in? What are the pain points that they're dealing with now? And so getting into their mind is what is it that they need to know? And again, speaker bureaus 
people who book speaking, they want to know that you're the speaker who can help them transform the audience. The audience was here, then you take them on a journey to be here. And where's the here that they want to be? Do they want to understand more about being confident about using technology? Do they want to understand how they can leverage technology? What does technology do for them? Where, where's, you know, you've got a before and after. We all love before and after transformations. What's the after that they want? And I would have all of the talks geared towards the after. Okay. So painting a scenario of what that after looks like. Great. Good. Thank you. Other questions. Yep. Deb, thank you. Well, this is fabulous as always. Um, but I'm going to follow all along with, with Christina. How do we know what they want? I mean, mm. you know, just because we think, oh my gosh, this is fabulous. Or my friends tell me it's fabulous. How do we know when uh -huh, somebody will pay us to be fabulous? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. This is such a great question. And I had one slide that I took out of my presentation this morning, one slide, which was all about how to survey people to find out what they want. No kidding, it's uh, out of there. And so asking, first, first of all, identifying who is in each scenario, is it a corporate audience? What kind of corporate audience is it? Is it an association? What kind of association? Who are their members? Or what are the demographics of that particular group? What and what are if there's a conference? And Sheila, you can comment on this too because you have spoken so many times at different conferences. Is what first of all? What's the theme of the conference? What's the theme? What are, what are the goals of the conference? And what are the questions that perhaps the meeting planner has? The uh, group who's the person who's organizing all of this, what are they looking to accomplish? They're looking to accomplish people to have more confidence, competence, curiosity, community, capability. Like what's the transformation? And so, you know, things like the three keys to this, the five strategies to this, how to go from this to this, thinking about what the transformation is. Does that help, Deb? Yeah. And I think, you know, ChatGPT can be very helpful, but I also do a lot of research on what are the trend spotting things that are happening in the world? What are the trends? What And, and it's really focused on, I also think, having conversations with the people who are planning the meeting, planning the event. And I have great conversations with them about, hey, what are your goals for the event? What are the themes for the event? What's the top line messaging? What kind of message are you looking for? Is it educational, motivational, inspirational? What do you want from me? They will tell you. Yeah. Um, Sheila, what are your points of view on that as well? And, and we'll come over to you, Susan, in a second. Yeah. Because you've done a lot of association organization work. Yeah. So um, you just kind of talked about it, right? Because being a keynote speaker or professional speaker, there are speakers that are educational. There are speakers that are only motivational and there are speakers that are inspirational. So you kind of have to pick a lane or you can have some signature talks for each of those. Um, but I do like what Kathleen does. People reach out to me and then I meet with that group, right? We have a Q and a session, I learn about their pain points. I have a intake form that I mail to them or email to them. And um, I said, you know, if you can answer these questions, great, but we're going to jump on another call and we're going to go through it. And so then I gather all that data, but that also helps me, Deb, um, do research, right? So that I have that data for the next time or whatever. But, and then I also look at their social media accounts, what are they posting, what's important to them. I even ask if there are certain words or phrases that are, um, you know, lingo that the company uses. So then I work that into my talks um, and we'll get laughs sometimes, right? You know, if they have like some 
fun buzzword or whatever that they like to use. And I put that in there. So, or if there are things that are off limits, right? So there's some um, things that are maybe off limits or there's some words or, um, you know, I can't think of anything at the moment, but um, so my intake form is quite extensive. I do feel like I need to narrow it down, but that came from being an NSA and other speaking. And I had a speaking coach at one time and that was part of it. So um, I think the signature talk is really hard, right? That's where I struggle. Um, I've had a couple of different people help me through that, um, but I don't feel like I have it nailed. And so this is exciting. Always learning, always improving. Thank you. Yes, yes. And we're going to have, we'll, we, we will have a VIP session, uh, which is literally a working session so that you can come up with what's your premise, your big idea, what's the big hook, what are the three key points that are going to illustrate and reinforce that big hook, that big idea, that big premise. And then, of course, your closing wrap, wrapping up, CTA, final word words linger, and then be able to wrap the whole thing up in a beautiful little bum bundle. So literally your framework, you can always just go to your framework and say, okay, well, it's a group that they're, they're, the big idea, the premise should be get an annual mammogram, okay? So then that's the premise and the keynote idea. And you could start off with, it was the scariest day of my life or what I wished I had known then what I know now. And I'm going to give you in our working VIP session, probably 15 different ways to start off your talk. So people go lean in and go, oh my gosh, like hooks and ideas that, of different ways to start. Because oftentimes starting is the hardest part. So it's starting. What are your key points that are reinforcing it with stories and anecdotes and client experiences? And then you wrap it up at the beginning. Here's where we started. And then your CTA. So beginning, middle, and end. I think that's, for me, that's a very helpful way to look at it. Good. Thank you. Deb, question, please comment. Well, so my other question is, you know, and, and you might be covering this on the, the future programs. How much do we personalize? Um, mm -hmm. You know, I have seen people who now, you know, obviously some of this depends on the level of the speaker, right? You know, somebody who's paid a hundred grand, maybe personalize one sentence at the beginning and one sentence at the end. Um, but for, you know, because I do think we should personalize, you know, we've all been to presentations where, you know, they're like, where are we? Are we right. in California today? And what group are we talking to? But I think there's also, you know, when we get so caught up in, I have to completely rewrite it every time that then we don't. So what's the happy medium? Great question. Great question. It's, I also think about what, what's the goal for our speaking and, you know, is really, again, we start at the very beginning. What's the, what's the goal? What's the premise? And if the goal in the premise is to uh, have clients say yes to us, if it's a, you know, again, we're not selling, but more we're seeding throughout. I think having your basic structure of your beginning, your middle, and your end, you can kind of slot out some things during the talk that are more personalized, okay? And so, you know, the beginning, the intro, when you have the hook and the captivating them at the very beginning, that could be more of a personalized approach to what you normally say. And, you know, I think it also depends upon what's your point of view? What, what is your preference here? What's the investment they're, they're making in you? Um, I like to personalize and customize the very beginning because I want them to lean at the very beginning and I want them to remember it. I want to be referred. So I think once having the system down, the signature talk, the signature story presentation system, it's going to help you kind of, for me, I can visually see it and I can say, okay, I could swap that thing out. And then I could have that one story that I normally tell. I could have it swapped out for something that's a little bit more related to their theme of their conference or something. Okay. 
So thank you. Good, good, good. Thanks. Good. Susan, please jump in. And this kind of relates to earlier and exactly what Deb was talking about. I've known people who they spend time before they speak engaging with the people who are attending the conference. They meet some people. They're actually able to take something about the conversation they had with that person or the question that was asked of them by that person prior to it and tie that into why their message is important to this group. And I think with those personal stories, that's how you engage that in a way that you're not only acknowledging who you are and what you're contributing to them, but you actually know who is in the audience and why it's important to them. And frequently, if you're being uh, someone who is submitting a proposal to speak, the outline that they give you says, here's what we're looking for. Here's the amount of time. Is it part of maybe different, um, what do you call it, channels? Or they've got different um, components that one might be a tech discussion and one might be a more human interest one. And so you know how you're going to tie your stories in based on which of those channels is the group you're going to connect with at that event. And those things really help you to frame that up in exactly what Sheila was talking about and Kathleen has said. Susan, brilliant, because I always, if it's an event, if it's a conference, I always get to the event the early in the day, the night before. I am schmoozing. I am connecting. I am just loving up the people because uh, I call it warming up the room. So I'm warming up the room and this is kind of, uh, we'll be also talking at a future date about how do you, the, the um, we're talking today about the structure of a signature talk or a signature story or presentation. We'll also be talking about the mechanics of the doing of it. You know, there's the doingness of the presentation and then the also the mechanics of implement, implementing and executing and presenting. And, you know, we'll lean on Sheila, too, to come into this conversation because you have a lot of experience there. But warming up the room, oh, my gosh. So then when you get on stage, you get on the platform, everybody's your friend. They're leaning into you. And just love what you said, Susan, because we're listening to what's happening. And I love, and and speaker planners love when you do a call back to the beginning of the event the name of the event, the planning committee of the event, what are the themes of the event and what's the theme of the day? And then being able to reference people in the room. And here's what I heard. I heard from the last speaker that you know, it, it, there's continuity and people love that. And that's the surest way to get yourself invited back for the next event. Yeah, or invited to come talk to, give a presentation to their corporate they're local corporate people. Yeah, great, good. Any other questions before we complete? As always, we put so much fabulousness and content into our short period of time. And so I really, really appreciate that, that you are here, that you participated. Thank you, thank you. And we give a big shout out to all of the people watching the replay. I'm astounded. I'm getting messages every day about people that have watched all of our videos on our YouTube channel. A person the other day said, I love that that video that the council did on how to ask and receive what you really want. I was like, we did that two years ago. <laughs> so the, the, the impact of what we're doing is very powerful. So thank you. So let's complete our time. And you, know, you can see that having a Q&A session, I'm modern modeling for you is, that we're not gonna end on a Q&A. We're gonna have then, we do the powerful Q&A, but we wanna also have a powerful wrap up and a call to action that now I believe more than ever, now is the time for you to be a powerful professional speaker and have professional success for more in 24. The world needs to hear your message. It's important. Let's get a megaphone and let's get your message out there. So since we're in a challenge, love for you to write down and we'll just complete our program because you know we're working on the honor system here. Uh, 
What's one action that you're going to take between now and tomorrow's program? Because tomorrow's program will be very powerful about storytelling, the mechanics of telling a good story. You know, when you get, you heard Oprah's story. I mean, how powerful. Listen, that story was very, very well produced. That story was very, very well created and rehearsed. And she makes it look so easy but you know she worked on that origin story very powerfully, and you can too. So thinking about what's the one action you'll take from our time together in the next 24 hours, okay? And so what's next is tomorrow is how to captivate your audience with storytelling. And then our day three of our Speaker Success Challenge, we're featuring Christina DiGiacomo talking about how to supercharge your success as a speaker with AI? How do we use technology to become at the leading edge, never the bleeding edge, the leading edge of speakers? Okay. So with that, thank you for your participation. Thank you for, for being here, for sharing your wisdom, your friendship, and can't wait till tomorrow's program. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.